Welcome to Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV. On this channel we do three things, bike builds, bike reviews and long form motorcycle adventure movies. So if you like what we do, subscribe. And if you want to hang on a minute, you'll get to know about the World Raids. They're a cracking bike. Look, I brought a screwdriver to alter the clitter, click, clitters. I think that's what they're Is called, <laughs> Today we're testing the Tenere World Raid. After getting to know the suspension and fuel range, Clubby and I are heading off on a 1400 km adventure. We catch up with Adam Riemann and his warhorse, and we ride with him and then on to the Dirty Weekend bike meet. But first, let's get on the latest Yamaha Tenere offering to hit Australia, the World Raid, which has been in Europe for nearly two years. But as we know, Australian riding conditions and rider demands are very different and more demanding. I'll be focusing my attention on the most significant improvements to the bike, suspension and fuel capacity, up from 16 litres on the standard bike to 23 litres. You know, I own a Tenere 700, but I'm really excited about riding this one. And there's two primary reasons, and yeah, there's other stuff, and you know, there's a colour screen and all that, but it's fuel range and suspension. They're the two primary things we want to test today. So the bike is now fuel full. It's got 23 litres in it. The claim is it can do 500 k's on a tank, but uh, already there's been a couple of riders who've had these bikes in Australia now for about two or three weeks, and they're saying, no, we're not getting that in Australian conditions. We're getting around the high or mid 450s. That's what they're getting, maybe 460. So let, let's do our real world test, which is a combination of blacktop freeway, um, bit of dirt, lot, lots of dirt today, and probably getting on the gas a bit as well. And I think that's more realistic of how we Aussies will use this bike. One of the other things that excites me about riding this bike is it's fitted with KYB suspension. Now, the pluses to that is it's got another 30 mil of travel, both front and rear, and um, that's I reckon will really add to the bike. KYB is renowned for quality suspension and already I'm hearing from a couple of blokes who've got the bikes that they're really liking these. So when you've got longer suspension there are pros and cons to that. Yeah you should get better performance but it's at a cost of seat height. So some people are going to find the World Raid tall. So let's have a look. I'll put this stand up. Now I I can't touch with both feet on the ground on tippy toes. It's, look, for me, it's quite comfortable being on one leg, but some people won't like that, particularly when they get into tight, tricky stuff. <laughs> See the smile on my face? Front suspension is absolutely sorted. Yeah, I've got to do more and I've got to press it harder, but I already know they've absolutely nailed that. Now, that's on the standard clicker settings, and we'll go through them. There's 24 uh, clicker settings on the front, both for compression, rebound, and, and then there's preload as well. You can adjust. i got to say, my sense is already, just with that very quick blast, that that's about spot on for me. Rear... What I did then, I bottomed it, it didn't fall through the stroke and on the way back if I kept it on the pipe as I jumped um, it wouldn't bottom um, but I think I can get a bit more out of the back just by upping the preload. So I don't even know where it is yet. No, it's not that side. Well, process of elimination. It must it's only got two sides. It's only got two. There it is. So what I'm going to do yeah, hard. All right, let's see where it is. Oh yeah, there's a lot in that. We'll take it 12 up from where it was, which was the standard setting. See how we go now. Yeah, 
You know how you used to do primary school news and go to the teacher? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I got. This is bloody good suspension. If anything, I've probably over uh, put the preload on, put too much preload. Probably could dial that back a bit. But as I'm going harder, when I went harder then, I'd say it's just about right. Um, could probably do with a couple of clicks of uh, compression and rebound damping to finish it off. But remember, this suspension on this bike is completely adjustable. So you just get in there with a the screwdriver. And I may do that, but you know what? I'm, I'm happy with how it's performing at the moment. How about the front? Do you think you're going to make any adjustments to the front at all? Nothing. The front... Kyle is on standard settings now. Now that excites me because there's riders that ride harder than me and we're on the middle setting. KYB clickers respond and that's because of their high quality nature. The riders that go faster than me I think are going to have the ability to adjust that for their riding style which opens this bike up with standard suspension on the world raid just opens that up to a whole range of other riders that probably wouldn't think of this bike. The front suspension, look I brought a screwdriver to alter the clitter, click, clitters? God help me. I think that's what they're is, called. Is that, that's probably going in, I'd say, knowing your sense of humour, but we'll change that from clitters to clickers. So you got rebound up the top, a compression down the bottom and preload here. I'm not touching them. I brought a screwdriver along and frequently on this track I, I alter things. I'm not doing that because it's just spot on. Although it's carrying 23 litres, it's got a lower centre of gravity than the standard Tenere and all most of that fuel is down much lower. And the tank itself, it's quite funny. In the Tenere, you feel like you're sitting in the bike. It's a little bit less so with this. Um, now, a lot of people say, oh, I've got to get crash bars. I, the jury's out for me on that. I mean, I'm looking at this reinforced panel through here, and uh, it, it looks strong enough to me, and I, I think that's like a sacrificial thing. The Super Tenere had a similar design to protect the radiators, might have to talk to uh, Yamaha about that as to the strength of that, but um, it seems really solid to me and, and would protect radiators and tank. The tank itself, this tank, it seems like it's made out of resin or plastic or something. Yeah, if you bend it, you'd scratch all that, but yeah, uh, interesting. The seat has changed and it's really usable. I found myself already using it. It's much more long and it extends up into the tank. Um, yeah, it's a much better design. It's 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 really comfortable. You know, you've still got your all all your old ergos of the T700, but they're just improved. They're just refined. And while I'm waxing lyrical about it, and I'm loving the fuel tank, and I'm loving the suspension, it's got a couple of problems. The first is the mounting of the exhaust pipe. You've still got the old design. Now, the old design is these two bits that connect onto the frame like that and if you fall heavily it can bend the, the frame inside now yeah you can pull it and pull it out there's only so many times you can do that the other one is the rear brake now it's always been renowned as spongy but there's a couple of people now have put aftermarket brake pedals on them and that's eliminated the problem the actual braking assembly itself is fine what it is though is this stainless steel uh, brake pedal it's just it's just makes the brakes feel spongy when they're probably not I mean the good thing about it is if you if you hit something and I've hit something I bent mine up to here you can just bend it back down there's not a problem Dave um one of the things I really enjoyed about my Tenere was the airbox access well, I have no idea Kyle so I'm assuming I'm assuming it's the same so when you turn that this comes out yeah, it's the same deal, I'd say. Good old Japanese engineering. They do not want anyone to lose that. All right. Yes! Look at that. It's the same design. Same design. Yeah, praise the Lord. Now, the only thing I do with my bike is put a, a uni pre-filter on that, keep the metal spring in it, and you just sap it around there, and um, that combined with that is, is fine. It's peachy.
Beautiful. Now I've been a bit slack, Kyle, but uh, these wide foot pegs are brilliant. They're just great for standing on. Stand on them all day. It's a pretty dry day today, so I've left the rubbers in there, removable if you want, but um, brilliant. This button, this button is really hard to press. Like it, like without gloves on, it hurts your fingers. White knuckle stuff, I can see. It's it. white knuckle stuff. <laughs> um, now, one thing I didn't show you: there's some different settings for uh, themes. <clears throat> so I'll show you the raid setting. Okay, so this is a raid setting. So what I've got on, uh, you move back a bit, and you'll just see. This switch so I can move between these two trip meters reset them I can do anything I want with them and um, yeah it's just a more raidy explore theme it's about you know racing the bike in the Morocco or something mm -hmm. which is really interesting but perhaps not relevant to Australian conditions but it looks the part it's another one there I'll just go to your street Ugh. And there's street, and there's my thumb. Like honestly, like you need gloves on to change that. Yeah, so yeah, and hold it on. So all it's a series of is long and short clicks to select your things. It's very um, reminiscent of the the uh, um, previous ten or eight screen yeah, that one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and you can just zoom through. I suspect this menu button. With sand in it, it's going to get mighty untidy, but time will tell. We'll have long-term users who have something to say about that. So, Dave, if um, you're going to buy this and you want it to full-blown adventure bike, what, what have we got to do? Not much, but you've always got a personalised adventure bike. So, bark busters or equivalent, Definitely. you need a pannier rack. And the pannier rack has two purposes, for putting your, your soft panniers on, but also for protecting that. There's one more thing, and that's this bash plate. Uh, and I'll show you under here, in its current form, yeah. there's a coolant bottle just here, very vulnerable to bush sticks. Now I had a mate on a, on a different brand bike who put a bush stick through the oil filter. So if it can go through an oil filter down there, it can certainly go through that plastic bottle. So it certainly needs a, a decent bash plate and mate, that would do me. And I reckon that'd be perfect. Welcome to my backyard. With the adventure loop almost complete, fuel range is on my mind, and in the conditions we rode today, which I would rate as a typical adventure, fuel range had varied significantly from 4 litres to 5.6 litres per 100 kilometres. The average was 5.3 litres per 100 k's, giving me a theoretical range of around 430 kilometres. I'm heading to the final testing ground for the suspension, the Wadigan Creek Road Rock Farm. So I spent a lot of time focusing on suspension today and we've just done Wadigan Creek Road and for the locals that know it, they know it is a rock farm with these short sharp rocks that frequently give tyre flats, it's just, you can't avoid it if you don't have correct tyre pressures. The suspension on this bike, I mean it just confirms to me that it's, it's excellent, it's just excellent, just straight right out of the showroom. It's going to put suspension specialists out of a job because you won't need to touch this suspension. This bike truly represents the Tenere spirit from many, many years ago. So I've got a feeling in Australia, in South Africa and America, these things will sell like hotcakes because the suspension's so good and now it's got the range. So there's no modification to it. Uh, any advice for our American uh, potential buyers? Yeah, look, my American friends, and that's you know about a quarter of my audience is Americans, don't buy the standard Tenere. Just keep saving. I know you've got a bit longer to wait. Just keep saving those pennies or rubles, or whatever you use as currency over there, and save up for this because you won't be disappointed with this. Beautiful day. Oh, no.
There's a war horse up my ass. And we're heading to the Dirty Weekend, which is a multi-denominational bike meet. All bikes, all brands. And beautiful riding conditions. It's going to take us two days to get there. Today we're heading to Nundal. I come in fourth gear at the moment. It's pulling from 2,000 revs. It's like an automatic, honestly. So flexible, this engine. Lovely country through here. It's just starting to dry off though. setting in Nundal. Been a good day Dave. Hasn't it? Those sweeping, lovely winding roads through valleys. It's just Tenere country everywhere you go, isn't it? Yeah. meets new technology. We've got Adam Riemann directly in front of me on his war horse. I think it's 25 years old. And then we've got Clubby in front of him on a brand new African twin. Here comes a truck. <laughs> yeah, I'd slow down too. Holy shit. <laughs> bike's got a bit of poke to it, you know. <laughs> the Tenere's are really good for this sort of stuff, like pulling from nothing. They just do it so well, so effortlessly. You know, this is that thing, you know, those spec sheet peepers who just look at you know, graphs, they don't get it. <laughs> like this engine works for adventure. And I've got to say that Honda 700's got a bit of poke low down too. New world rates, but we've been with Adam just coming up that hill there, this old girl does all right up that hill, Adam. Don't ever underestimate the war horse. <laughs> 62 horsepower, a bag of torque. I'm not sure what the full specs are, but it's just, it's all you need. You don't need much more. Yeah, it's, it's, inter it's interesting, like you're using the torque coming up that hill. It's so useful, isn't it? Yeah, but with no traction control on those wet roads yeah. you don't if if it had a more aggressive power even for its weight you're on the verge of wheel yeah. spin on some of those corners yeah those uphill slimy turns old technology new technology interesting but the engines have a similar dynamic don't they yeah, the t7 especially the, i've got a t7 at home same motor as that yeah and it's the one of the modern one of the few modern bikes that gives me that same just pleasure to go down the shops on yeah that the warhorse does the yeah. t7 has that 
just you don't have to ride it hard you don't have to go nuts you're just on a motorcycle go and this motor's mint well it's good to ride with you adam yeah cheers thanks dave He doesn't know where to go. Oh, I love this. Bobby, turn that blinker but it's surprisingly a bit dustier. And this is a pretty important bridge. This is the Sergeant Andrew Russell Bridge. And uh, Sergeant Andrew Russell was killed in Afghanistan and he was only 33 years old. Lest we forget. Clubby and I spent two nights at the Dirty Weekend Bike Meet and in the coming weeks I'll be showing event footage. But in this video there's one bloke I want to catch up with and that's Greg Yeager of RideADV.com.au who's travelled more adventure miles on a Yamaha Tenere than anyone I know. Greg Yeager from RideADV, great to see you here at the Dirty Weekend. Good to see you too Dave. Mate, uh, Clubby and I have been riding the, the world raids for a little while now, but you've had them a bit longer and you've arguably cracked out more kilometres than anyone in Australia on them. How are you finding them? Well, definitely the team's cracked it out. I've been a little bit sidelined, but the boys, and we've been, which is great because we're getting more feedback from a broader audience. Yeah. Um, out of the box, Dave, it's, it's almost like our other bikes, but out of the box. Yes. So it makes sense. We're carrying the same fuel range as we get with our Camel Tank modified bikes. Yes. Um, the suspension out of the bike, and I think we spoke about this previously, I think 70% of customers that bought the, the standard 27 will yep. get a modification. I think it's probably 20% or, or 15% in this folks will do this. Definitely change the spring at the back. Yes. But for us and for our bags, we carry as a crew, but overall wind protection, um, the fuel carry, the center of gravity, just those little things, the TFT to a point, it's been fantastic. Yeah, uh, the the strengths for me were the suspension. I, I felt they they'd nailed that. There'll always be five or ten percent who who want to do something yeah, with that. But you can ride this straight out of the showroom floor, and it's a cracker, isn't it? It is definitely straight out of the sh showroom floor. It's when you start to add this sort of stuff that we require with our crew staff yeah. to carry weight. We're definitely going to do something with the back. The front's been really good, but. We'll have a fiddle with it as we do, but like out of the box, unreal. They, they've nailed it. As we got it, Dave, we, um, we're in a hurry to get it out there. So yep. uh, I, I knew it was coming, so I got onto AXP. Yeah. And I had to buy a bash plate from OS, so no one in the country had them. And, yeah. and just a, a second mortgage, and we got that secured. Yeah. Um, we've been running the plastics for a while. We like those. Yeah. We like the rally up sweet pipes from Camel. We like the way they're protected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they're in behind our racks. Yeah. And, of course, the, the, the Camel brake pedal yes. takes care of the... <laughs> The Have squidginess. you got one of those yet? No, but I know. I'll have to get you hooked up. Let's get some of the range, get you hooked up, get you up to the workshop and get one of those on. Yeah. One figure clutch. Yeah. And we've been testing these Mali Moto 
um, Steg. Steg extensions. Yeah. And they're actually, now we've done, listened to them and done what we said, we've moved it back. They've been fantastic. Yeah. Personal bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. GPS up here and a back up here. Yeah. Obviously, for what we're doing. Yeah. And the MSC, just a top plate to mount that. Yeah. And that's, you know, and of course, a set of Pirelli Rally Race. Yeah, you got it then. And we're done. Yeah, mate. No, that's oh, good. a set of Ballard YZ, YZWR foot pegs. We've been running YZWR foot pegs for a long time, but they're the Ballard ones. Yeah, no, they look good. That's a good setup. I'm, I'm really impressed with them. I mean, we've punched out oh, 650Ks on this ride and probably do another 600 before we get home, you know, cutting through the country and yeah. that. And Yeah, I'm just happy with it. Just It's just a... Now with the, the capability of the suspension, the fuel range, and as you said, there's something different well, about it, how it looks after the rider, isn't it? Yeah, if you, if you a, a, the screen has better. It has, doesn't no it? Big, and the side panels are better. But yeah. for me, look at the height of that nut. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The standard tank sits here. That's right. right? That's a big difference. Yeah, so centre difference. of gravity is lower, isn't and it? And while the standard T7 is so good, it always steers well, we've yeah. never had any complaints, and yeah. you can sit down high speed dirt, it's great. This is better. Yeah, I haven't done plenty. any of that out west stuff, and Lincoln did all of that. Yeah. And Lincoln kept coming saying it's more stable, it steers better. And yeah. I said there's nothing wrong with the other one, but it's definitely no, better. No, it's definitely better. All right, mate, Greg Yeager, great to see Next you at Ride right ADV. Good to see you, mate. T for tenor Ray, my boys. World rating. Two thumbs up. So, Clubby, by the end of the day, we would have punched out about 12, oh, 1,400 kilometres, I think, or something like that. So, we've had a pretty good run on the tenor race, and we've had a great morning. What's your feelings about it? Oh, look, I, over the course of this trip, Dave, you, twice you've dropped the, the R word, and uh, it, it, it's just hit the nail on the head for me. It's just refined. The, the world rate, it's just a more refined T7, isn't it? And, uh, you know, as we've said all along, you've got the added fuel range, you've got a little bit more wind protection with the reshaped fairing and winglets, but a lot more lower wind and body protection, obviously, with the wider tank. Front suspension, you just keep giving that two thumbs up all the time. And I love the Ergos for stand-up riding. You know, any time I'm on the dirt, bigger foot pegs, and even though the tank's that much bigger and wider out front, where you stand, it's not outrageously large and wide. And just enjoyable to ride, Dave. That's my summary. Enjoyable to ride, refined, but my caveat again all along is more expensive than a standard T7. And I think the riding that we've done this weekend for this dirty weekend tour, all on the back of the Great Dividing Range, Central Tablelands, up into the New England, got to the event, turned around, now we're coming back along the tops today and then dropping down towards the coast. Gravel roads, forest roads, a little bit of fire trail here and there. It's just fodder for bikes like the World Raid. It's just true adventure riding, Australian East Coast adventure riding, and this bike just laps it up. Fuel range is the other kicker. Like we've left now on dock, 120 k's to anywhere now and we're already half a tank in for the morning not even haven't even got a hint of anxiety of fuel fuel anxiety yet dave but you're not getting 500 k's like you did the other day no well that was a lot more legal speeds more sedate gentlemanly touring shall we say yeah we've had instances on this ride with the company that we've kept where there was a little bit more pressure on the throttle hand wasn't there to keep the dust and and like a pair of amateurs we had no nav, no route with us, did we? No. So if we lost the dust in front, we were on our own, weren't we? So there was a bit more pressure. So in my test, we came in around uh, 460, 430 kilometres. Where do you see it sitting? Okay, so on when I rode the bike down to the Brindabellas, three fills, I averaged exactly 22 kilometres per litre yeah. each fill. Extrapolate that by the 23 litres in the tank, that gives you 506 kilometres range. Yeah. Okay, here now, I've been, today's fills have been at 17 kilometres per litre. Extrapolate that out, you're down into the low 400s for a safe range. You know, it all comes down. We've got gear on this weekend. We've had headwinds both on the way up and today coming back down home. A lot of variance there. Yeah, you can get the 500k range out of it as Yamaha touts, but that's going to be in certain conditions, certain provisos there. But certainly it's a, it's a mid 400s range most days of the week on the world road. What a great opportunity to really get to know 
the world raid and you know we're by the end of this trip we're going to punch out about four 1400 k's so i own a t700 and i've been riding the world raid definitely more refined one of the things that sticks out is that despite it having a higher fuel capacity there is a lower center of gravity and it seems to handle better i i, I don't have any doubt about that we've talked about suspension we've talked about fuel range just want to talk about ergos because at the end of the day you want to punch out big miles. This fairing and those winglets are ideal for me. No buffeting whatsoever. Standard, standing and seated position on this bike is fantastic. So for the last couple of hundred k's I've been mucking around with the ABS and I've been focusing on putting it in the off-road mode. So that's not turning ABS completely off, it's just the off-road mode for the rear wheel. And I'm really impressed with it. Uh, it. It really gives you stability. Like where we've been coming down, it's quite slippery corners and quite deep dust. And you can put a firm application of the brake and it, and it doesn't uh, break traction. But if you, if you want to turn a bit, you just give it an extra stomp and you can push the back out if you want. So, so in terms of this ride, you know, four days away or five days away, haven't done anything to the front suspension whatsoever. Wound up the preload to the max to take this uh, gear. The gear itself comes in at around, I don't know, 19 kilograms. And there's no luggage rack at all. I've just gone for soft luggage, this giant loop great basin. Works a treat, keeps out of your way. And that's my setup. There's nothing more to say about this bike. It's got a proven engine and it just does the miles and we know it's going to be reliable. Now, hot off the press, I've got, I, I asked Yamaha to talk to me about suspension settings, but these are for the Tenere Tragic sort of people. But I'll read it out because uh, it's useful for people who had a world raid and they, they may not have access to this particular document. So with the, um, the rear shock, you've got... Uh, the first thing is the standard is 200 mils. The World Raid has 220 mils of suspension. The shock absorber stroke is a little bit longer at 101 millimeters for World Raid. Standard 94 millimeters. Uh, the spring rate for standard is 70 newton meters. For the World Raid, it's 75, and I noticed that straight away when I got on the bike. So that's a really sensible move. Now damping adjusting position. So it goes. 23 clicks for really hard, 13 clicks standard, and no clicks for soft. Now remember, you wind it all the way in and then you click out. Now for World Raid, and, and incidentally, the standard suspension clickers don't work. Now, am I saying that off the top of my, pulling that out of my ass? No, I'm not. I've actually watched that being dyno tested. There's only a couple of the clicks that work, but that's for another day. But this has KYB suspension. The clickers do work on this. So for World Raid, 23 clickers, damping adjustment is hard, 11 is uh, standard and naught is soft. Compression, 18 hard, 14 standard, naught soft. A lot of people who've had a World Raid will appreciate this car, so you might put it at the back. Um, so now on this bike, it's got the standard settings at the moment on the rear and standard settings on the front. So let's go through the forks. Uh, standard fork is 210 mils, the world raid is 230 mils, so that extra distance is what we saw when we were um, tiptoeing at the service station back there at Colnura. Uh, now, um, interestingly, the free length of the spring on the standard is 422 millimetres, on the world raid it's 468 millimetres. Uh, spring rate's the same between both, but you've got a longer spring on the World Raid. Um, oh, this is interesting. Oh, I wouldn't have known this. So, four coil, quantity each fork leg. It's asymmetrical. So, seven, 624 cubic centimetres on the left and 574 on the right. Very interesting, isn't it? Um, all right, that's probably not that interesting. I cut that out. It's fucking boring. All right, this is the one that's important. Okay, this is the important one for the fork settings. 
So for soft, uh, for the world raid, oh yeah, I'll just do world raid. Start again. So damping adjusting for the world raid front suspension, 33 clicks is soft, 16 clicks is standard, one click is hard. And the compression, 22 clicks is soft, 8 is standard, and 1 is hard. And again, the forks at the moment are set up to standard, and I'm happy with that. Yep. That may be a 10 or 8 tragic end moment. For the number crunches. The number crunches. But, you know, on some bikes, those, those clicker settings are under the seat. Because that gives you a guide. You go, oh, right. But they don't, I don't know why. It shouldn't be a secret. You know, I had to... I had to break into the Yamaha headquarter vault <laughs> to get those those figures out because I wanted them in case we wanted to adjust it on the fly, but didn't have to. Didn't have to. So that goes in my little pocket and that will be burnt when I get home, Yamaha. <laughs> it's time to get going. It's time to move on. This behind me, that day is gonna come. I'm breaking the walls down one by one. Nothing can stop me. That day is gonna come. Well, sometimes, you know, they always ask us, oh, give us the GPX route. We're never going to give you the GPX route. But look, we're giving you a hint. Get out and do it, Just guys. Just come out. Go and do it and find it yourself. Riamaka Road. There you go. Chuck that into your GPSs. Yeah. yeah. World rating. Perfect, mate. It's brilliant, isn't it? But there's no one around, Dave. Where are all the other world rates? I don't know. They should Why be here. Why aren't they out here?